So I've got some massive news for you today. So I want to start at the beginning of the week. A uh, Catholic news agency posted an article, and I'm just going to read some quotes from that article. It was uh, very confusing at the time. So they said, the issue was first raised about privacy in 2018 when a person con uh, concerned with reforming the Catholic clergy approached some church individuals and organizations, including Catholic news agency. This party claimed to have access to technology capable, capable of identifying clergy and others who download popular uh, dating apps. Um, for men attracted to men, and to pinpoint their locations using the internet addresses of their computers or mobile devices. The proposal was to provide this information privately to church officials in hopes that they would discipline and remove those found to be using these technologies to violate their clerical vows and possibly bring scandal to the church. CNA and others at the time declined the party's offer, but there are reports this week that information targeting allegedly active uh, LMNOP priests may become public. So, uh, this led to the pillar releasing some information. And before I do that, before I talk about what they actually released, I want to mention J.D. Flynn. He, he was hired at CNA in 2017, and so he certainly sat on this information. And when he quit in 2020, the end of 2020, uh, he founded the pillar. And so I would say that... Uh, he did obtain this information while he was there, but was this the reason why he quit CNA? And so uh, the pillar did bust Monsignor Jeffrey Burrill from, uh, he was the secretary of the USCCB. He's, he was in a massively uh, important position, especially for a non-bishop. And uh, he resigned either whenever the information was released or shortly thereafter, he resigned as a secretary. Uh, after the pillar reported that he used a the dating app to meet up with men nearly every day for several years. He was ordained by Cardinal Burke for the Diocese of La Crosse, Wisconsin, and uh, he had worked for the USCCB since 2016, and he also, from 2009 until 2013, was a professor and formation director at the Pontifical North American College in Rome, otherwise known as the NAC. And this is where the bishops send their best seminarians, and it's also known to be a hotbed of uh, LMNOP activity. And so, and there's probably in your diocese, uh, there's probably some some priests, uh, seminarians who have attended the NAC. And there is a seminarian currently suing Cardinal Dolan. Um, I think I talked about this a while ago. I think his name is Anthony Gorgia. He was a seminarian at the NAC. He was a, he's, now he's a former seminarian. He left the archdiocese because he reported some inappropriate activity going on there, and uh, Cardinal Dolan ignored him. So the, it, it seems like, and, and there was also allegations that there were bishops involved uh, in, in this uh, activity, and you know, a high-ranking USCCB official who has been there for five years. Um, how did he get his position at the USCCB? Uh, who knew about it, and it seems like there were quite a few people. But the, the pillar isn't done. Uh, they, they weren't done because I was going to talk about this, you know, breaking story, and that would be it, but there's another story. The uh, Nighty Night Cardinal Tobin's Archdiocese is in hot water for the same type of thing. So the pillar contacted the Newark Archdiocese after a review of commercial Commercially available app signal data showed patterns of location-based app usage at more than 10 archdiocesan rectories and clerical residences during 2018, 2019, and 2020. There were 212 parishes in the Newark Archdiocese, so uh, more than 10. So it looks like that's at least 5% that they could actually prove that these uh, priests were using these apps to meet up with men. And, uh, well, a spokesperson for the Archdiocese told the pillar it is not acceptable to use apps inconsistent with church teaching. The Archdiocese has also expressed concerns about the morally suspect collection of app signal data. So um, you're seeing the Church of Pachamama kind of converge on the pillar, and they're saying, oh, you guys are invading people's privacy. Why would, how dare you do that? And, uh, a lot of the Catholics are saying, well, how dare they uh, violate their vows of celibacy? I mean, what's worse? You know, 
and the priests, and and I've always been consistent on this. If a priest, uh, you know, has a relationship, he should resign. He should be forced to resign. It's not illegal, uh, in in terms of the law, and so that's fine. Move on with your life. Um, or I guess a better situation would be that he should be. Um, uh, the, the bishop should give him the option to actually quit the priesthood or go to a monastery in seclusion for the rest of his life. And uh, I, I think that's a fair, you know, I think that's a fair point. But, uh, you know, the, the Church of Pachamama is, is very concerned about um, people finding out about the habits of, of uh, the, the habits that are supported by priests like Father James Martin, Cardinal Tobin. He's, Cardinal Tobin said a rainbow mass. And this is Cardinal Tobin's archdiocese. And remember that uh, Newark, New Jersey is one of McCarrick's former archdioceses. And Vigano, uh, he said that Tobin's appointment to Newark was orchestrated by McCarrick. And so there's a lot of connections there. So I have a lot of questions here. Uh, where did J.D. Flynn obtain this info? Now, it seems pretty clear that he obtained it when it was passed along to Catholic News Agency. Catholic News Agency didn't want to publish it. But uh, how many people have access to this information? And who, who, who sat on it besides J.D. Flynn? And uh, also, is, is J.D. Flynn attempting to take down the McCarrick Network? Because this is a good start. Newark, New Jersey is a good place to investigate. And when there's uh, reports of these priests, I, I hope that they make these names public. Uh, I hope that they cause a lot of priests to be kicked out that are not, um, you know, faithful to their Catholic vows. And how much more information does J.D. Flynn have? That's the key question here. And I've been critical of J.D. Flynn in the past. I've been critical of the pillar, but I think in terms of this information, and it's, it appears that maybe he's attempting to take down the McCarrick Network, or even just the Corruption Network in general, we need to support him behind this initiative, this effort. Because he has this information, we need to encourage him to publicly release it. Now, he hasn't really been publicly releasing a whole lot of it at a time, uh, but it appears that he may have a lot more information. Um, information from priests in a number of dioceses. Now, Newark, it seems like, is a hotbed of uh, corruption. But, you know, does he have information from the Archdiocese of Washington? I know... The church militant loves to release this kind of information when they find this stuff. So, and J.D. Flynn's sitting on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we just need to stand behind him, uh, you know, not let the Church of Pachamama harass him in any way. That's, that's the report that I have today, so stay tuned. Um, you know, props to the pillar for doing this research, getting that information out there when maybe CNA or EWTN told him not to release it. Maybe that's why he quit. And... That's great, because now <laughs> I like CNA's reporting, and J.D. Flynn is reporting some breaking stories. So um, thank you so much for watching this video. We are the laity, and we will not be silent.